What is going on everybody? So today I wanted to make a video talking about dealing with brown algae in this little nano tank um, that we're gonna be going to in a second. And just kind of how my approach uh, is gonna be when dealing with it. But first, I wanted to, guy, I wanted to give you guys a quick tour of uh, what we got going on here at the shop. We did a bit of a remodel here. We were set up more for service and less of retail, but because we had such a um, outpouring and a demand for uh, quarantine fish, we've kind of remodeled the store and have done it more of a, a retail style. Uh, there's a couple of fish that we have in stock right now. I wanted to kind of go over with you guys and show you just kind of our process of how we um, have these fish in an aquarium and how we treat them and just show you some of the progress here. So uh, let's begin. So I wanted to go over this real quick. We have a couple of fish in quarantine here. We have a white cheek or yellow rim uh, tang fish that has been in quarantine now, I believe going on 10 days and looking absolutely beautiful. Then we have a long nose butterfly fish right here, but still a little bit of spots. I see a little spot here and there. Uh, nothing to worry about, but um, we got them in copper right now. They're doing well. We got a mini to mini tang over here and a larger one over here, along with a tile fish, a dragonette, and who's over here? Who do we got in there? And then we also have a Antheus hide way in the back over there. But all the fish here are doing excellent. They're all eating um, very well. And uh, so far taking the medications pretty well, which in four more days, we'll be doing tank transfers on them. Now just coming in to getting acclimated, we have two firefish and two uh, fairy wrasse. I think they're Lubucky wrasse in there. So we'll be acclimating those pretty soon. And we have a Disjardini sailfin tang. And what else we got? It looks like two bar gobies. Oh, I love bar gobies. Completely underrated fish. And over here, we have a blonde naso, uh, firefish, and I believe uh, some type of tang. It's hard to tell from here. But they'll all be going in these tanks right here. We'll break them up individually, and we're gonna treat some with copper and some with uh, chloric and phosphate and they'll go through the four week quarantine process as well. We also got some chromis that came in. Now the, <laughs> these so far look pretty healthy. We do not mix our chromis uh, and antheus with any other fish just because chromis are known for getting uranema. And we do not want these guys, if one of them were to have uranema, uh, becoming in contact with any of the other fish we bring in. So we try to keep chromis together. We try to keep antheus together because they are known um, uh, carriers for uranema and so we're gonna put these guys in one of these 10 gallon tanks right here they'll be in their own tank five of them and we'll treat them with chloric and phosphate and keep a, a very close eye on them as well but we don't want to mix them with the other fish that came in on the order something really cool is this guy right here had a really bad case of uranema uh, I mean it, I thought he was a goner and he actually uh, has come around I'm really excited about that that makes me feel really good we got him still, um, we're doing four weeks of medication with him just because your anemo was so bad on him. And then uh, he's got about, uh, I believe seven more days of uh, chloroquine phosphate and then we'll go ahead and switch him to observation. But he's in a 10 gallon tank by himself. We're not putting him with anybody just because um, the risk of your anemo is just too great. And also uh, he's already been tank transferred uh, two times. So this is the third time he's been in a setup in this 10 gallon tank. Uh, once he completes the uh, rest of the time here, we'll go ahead and transfer him into another 10 gallon tank and then just kind of absorb him uh, for two weeks and make sure he's good because last thing we want to do is sell a fish that could potentially uh, infect somebody's tank. Hello, Mr. Puffer. I love these green sided puffers so much. They are awesome. Very hardy fish, great personalities. I, I highly recommend these guys, so beautiful. I mean, look at them, not shy at all, not camera shy, fun to feed. One of my favorite fish in the hobby. We also have this purple tang hiding back there, which is on its last day. Uh, today was its last dose of CP, and then we will be tank transferring it tomorrow uh, and observing it for two weeks. But uh, this tank, this fish came in in bad shape. It had, was covered in white spot. Some type of parasite was on it, some type of ciliate, and it was very weak. And um, I'm very glad to see after the treatment, it's doing way better. There's also a blue assessor in there as well somewhere but that fish is doing way better. So uh, I'm very happy that we're gonna be able to take him out of the medication and keep him in his own, we'll tank transfer him to another tank, probably somewhere up there, keep an eye on him, and then hopefully we can get him back into a tank, uh, a customer's tank. 
So all in all, it is a lot of hard work. Uh, we do have um, you know, uh, a very stressful day trying to keep everything in order and organized and try to keep all these fish medicated. Um, but I think it's completely worth it to have clean fish. And especially because we're on service and we're selling these fish to customers. A lot of customers that we service are tanks. So um, it is a little bit selfish of us to make sure that they're getting clean fish because then we know down the road that, that we're not gonna have to deal with uh, any disease in that person's tank at least none that came from us. And that's a big uh, weight off our shoulders when we're serving this, servicing their aquarium, that we know they got a clean tank. And um, you know, we don't, that's one thing we have to take out of the equation when servicing their tank. You can kind of get an idea of how our tanks are set up here. Each uh, system of, uh, each group of fish will be in its own tank. They, these tanks are not connected. They're not on the same filtration. We have a little exhaust port right there. Um, we have these uh, lids that are, uh, custom cut to the tank size so there's no spillage, no cross-contamination. We have a little feeding port right there which we just uh, undo that undo, undo that, and then we're able to feed inside there. The reason for all, all that in the setup is to just minimize cross-contamination between tanks. We don't want, if this tank, you know, if we do all these on the same filtration system, if one fish is sick, then that's gonna contaminate all of them. If that one fish is sick, then at least we can isolate it to this one tank and it's not gonna jump to other systems and then we can focus on the three tanks that are good and then just treat this tank maybe separately. But uh, the least amount of cross-contamination is possible, the better, and we really try to do small batches of fish and quarantine them um, as they're needed and really try to zone in on what medications would work for uh, certain species of fish. All right, let's pack up and go to the customer's house and I'll show you the tank I'm talking about. All right, so here we are. Now, this is not the tank I'll be doing a video on today. The tank I'll be doing a video on is upstairs. This is his downstairs tank. This is in his aqua forest uh, aquarium that he just set up. And the reason why I'm showing you this tank is because it is awfully cloudy, as you can tell. You can take a look at the water all through here. It's extremely cloudy. Look at this, look at the side view. You can't even see the other side of the tank. Top view, the, the water is completely cloudy. And that is because I just did a water change on it and all these snails started spawning. Yes, every single snail in this aquarium all went up to the top and started spawning. So it's not a bacteria bloom, it's nothing like that. It's purely from all these snails in this aquarium deciding that they're going to uh, start to spawn, basically um, you know, fertilize the water and reproduce. So <laughs> that's why this water is so cloudy. I've never personally seen snails uh, like make the water this cloudy. Uh, but it is, it is pretty common when I do a water change that snails and urchins start to spawn like this. So, But this is the aquarium we came here for, the upstairs tank, this little Nano Pico style aquarium. It's got nothing in it, no coral or anything, just one little like platinum clownfish in here. And you can tell that you can barely see in this aquarium because there's so much brown film algae on the glass and on the substrate. Um, now my first guess uh, that this tank is probably incredibly low on nitrates because there's not a lot of bio load in here. So I did the nitrate, nitrate test and it's supposed to be like a really dark uh, red color and it's pretty much clear. Um, the blue light makes it look like it's a little bit more than there is, but it's really uh, clear, which means there's very low nitrates in here, which is what is causing the brown uh, diatom bloom. I think where nitrates are like 0 0.025 or something like that, like really, really, really low nitrate. So um, it's not to be, it's not, it's no surprise there. He only has one fish in this aquarium. So uh, probably a good idea to start uh, dosing nitrate in this tank, maybe. The only other option would be to uh, add more fish, add a little more life to this aquarium. I'd love to see more. See, you can even look here in that little corner right there. That Now see, that looks like green algae. That's not hair algae, right? That's brown algae. When I grab it, it looks to the eye, it looks like hair algae, but when I grab it, 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 it just disintegrates, it melts in your hand. So this is definitely brown algae. Phosphates aren't even registering when I, when I did the phosphate test. So um, probably uh, I would recommend getting some corals in here, some cleanup crew, because I don't even see any snails in here, guys. Um, there's a bunch of different bacteria growing in this tank, so I think some type of uh, invert would love it. If you look here on this return nozzle, there's like a, and some like bacteria colonies growing on it. And it's just, this bacteria is just uh, uh, thriving in this low nutrient environment. And honestly, if you have no corals, maybe maybe we turn the light off and, and not give the, the tank so much light either. Maybe that's a good idea. So that's something I'm considering, but I, I would love to see this aquarium get some, uh, uh, some corals in it. Uh, I cleaned the glass a little bit here. 
Um, but yeah, definitely some corals, maybe some more fish. But for now, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of nitrate. Maybe we talk to the customer about adjusting his light, lighting schedule, because there really is no light, uh, no reason having that light on uh, a long time if there's really nothing in there for it to, uh, you know, no corals are in there that, that are using it. It's purely just for show and nobody's here looking at the tank. So yeah, so I added nitrate and we'll see what, what happens going forward. All right, guys. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Let me know uh, what successful tips you used uh, to treat brown algae in your tank. Until then, have a good one. I'll see you on the next one.